Hallelujah. Let's have your seats. I want us to sing this song if you don't know how to sing it. This is a song that has helped us a lot. And our forefathers and our elders have been telling us. And it's a nice song that wherever you are alone, that you sing it. Hallelujah. This is the time that in times of trouble that you turn that you find no one that you sing those songs. Hallelujah. Nijina era di Christo so Namatna ni mo ako siase Nijina era di Christo so Namatna ni mo ako siase That's the song Oh Nijina era di Christo so Oh, Namatna, Nimo Akosiase, Oh, Mijina, Era di Christo, so Namatna, Nimo Akosiase, Oh, Mijina, no so. Mijina Christo so na maye enkuni difo. Mijina no so. Mijina Christo so na maye ni awa shemino. Mijina no so. Mijina no so. Ah, Mijina Christo so na maye inkuni di fo. Clap your hands unto the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Yebetio onyami asem asema radi edibo suna saseno a odubo mino so asemino eye hai. A semino a year quam. San semino a ba a boy be pre and nante. San semine by a nante basa basa. But what didn't say you comport yourself? No moving just like that. The word of God is coming to you this morning. You need to be, you know, consider it very well, very important. And then you listen to it very carefully and you use it. To help yourself to edify you. And Sam Reno, you are young penny for her, your elder Donko. Can you uh, appreciate him? Elder Donko, you are her. Your mommy, in fact, what we do are our area emo, and yet Nipaketua, your mommy, Mrs. Asafo, Mrs. Asafo. Yes, in fact. From community four, community six, Sakumono, you see our Omo Wakumasi, Ejumana, and yet easy. Say, Obey Yami Ejumasa, Wayadi, Yami Shano. God bless you, Mama. We are so grateful. Ye were your mammy, and so a yenina, your mammy one. Eh, Mama one. And you always say, Mama, no one then can one. International one. Oh, yeah, we say international, no one then can one. Let you say, or you or be full from your mommy, Bakua, your friend, mommy, Mama, Mama one, Mama one international one, Mama Shelley Atanga, Shelley Atanga. Oh, appreciate her, appreciate her. Now, also, also, oh, aha. Catch your nest and we have a pa. Oh, auntie, auntie, one can ye, auntie, auntie. 
Elders, so can you appreciate all the elders? All the elders. Yeah. Now, also appreciate yourself with clap offering. Appreciate yourself. Yeah. 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 Matthew, Prophet Matthew. Bowen Sam Cassiano, Bowen Sam, Bowen Sam. Oh, keep on giving up to God. Give it up. Give it up to God. Yes, Bowen Sam, Eradin Shell. God bless you. Give it to us what the Lord has given you. God bless you. Oh, can you do it better unto God? Oh, I learned you are doing something better. Can you shout a big Amen? Hey, you know what? There's one thing that my father taught me. And then he called me and he said, Son, these people, if you are to rely upon their amen, you will be discouraged. So he said, Son, when you are going, make sure you have a full box of amen so that if they disappoint you with their amen, you will already have a full box of what? Amen with you. So there's one thing I came to tell you. Either you say amen or you don't say amen. I came through the advice of my father with my amen. So you better say and shout a big amen. God bless you once again. We thank God for such a wonderful privilege that he has given unto us. It has been his mercies. It has been his grace that has located us to that we are being called upon to share the word of God on this divine Sunday service. Hallelujah. My regards to the father of the house, my father, Prophet Samuel Atanga, wherever you are, I say God richly bless you for such a privilege or such opportunity that you've also given unto me. Hallelujah. And moreover, I give a great regard to the presiding elder um, and the entire management of the church for such a wonderful privilege that you also recognize me to be stand before the congregation and to share the word of God with you. Amen. And I can love leave behind my dear mom, Mrs. Asafu. Mrs. Asafu. And then you see, this woman, I've encountered this woman within the shortest possible times, but it seems the encounter has been very impactful. I say, Mommy, God bless you. God bless you. My sister too is here. And you know, before I continue, my mom is here. Oh, I, I, I thought you were, you were shouting, you were appreciating my mom. Oh, oh, oh. I said, my mom is here. Either you like it or not, my mom is here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, this woman is like, um, he had marvelous in my life. And then he has contributed to my personal welfare, spiritual and physical as well. You see, among the sons, I'm the one that... That chop a lot. <laughs> Hallelujah. When it comes to food. And I can imagine the amount or the quantity of food that I've eaten. This woman will still come and say, Ah, Matthew, are they, what, what do you know? I say, hey, Mama, nah, hey. Wow. The woman can produce food for us and we can eat her. Uh, mommy, God bless you. <laughs> we appreciate you for the great works you are doing in our life. God bless you for the impact, spiritual, physical, and other aspects. Your advice has contributed to our welfare. God bless you. You too. Say, can you, can, you, can you repeat after me? Say, I am the greatest. Oh, your spirit is down. Your spirit is down. Say, I am the greatest guest for the day. You, you cannot confess that. Say, I am the greatest guest for the day. Can you give it up to Jesus? Hallelujah. Shall we bow down our heads for a word of prayer? Father, we thank you once again for such a wonderful privilege that you've given unto us. It has been another day that we are before thy throne. 
Father, with the multiples of giftings, we've gathered here to present ourselves unto you. We pray that God, let your spirit be felt in the atmosphere within the day. We declare into the atmosphere that you devil, you have no power. You have no authority to take any control or any possession throughout this service in the name of Jesus Christ. With the corporate grace, the corporate anointing in the house, we declare as we warn you, Satan, that stay away from the children of God. Stay away from the sons of God. Stay away from the daughters of God. Stay away from the church of God. You have no power to manipulate any system. Within the day, in the name of Jesus Christ, these are the sons, the saints of God. Therefore, we present them that God, let your right hand overwhelm our souls. Let every word that we can be your word, but not the word of man. At the end of everything, we shall give glory and honor to you. We thank you for our life. We thank you for the day. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will pray. Somebody shout a big amen. Oh, shout a big amen. You know, I've already told you that I came with my amen. And even my mom too came. Her bag is full of amen. So if you refuse to say an amen, I will just walk to my mom, take her bag, and I will bring out her amen, add it to mine, and the amen will be amens. Oh, hallelujah. We bless God. This morning, once again, I will entitle my message, Your Perception About Jesus Christ Matters. Can you repeat that? Your perception. Can you repeat that? Your perception about Jesus Christ matters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your perception about Jesus Christ matters. Why am I saying this? That your perception about Jesus Christ matters. In this life, everything that you are doing, the perception that you had before starting a vision determines the outcome or the result of that vision that you are pursuing. So before I will start pursuing or chasing a goal or a vision or a dream in life, I must have some perception towards what I am about what practicing. So from your point of view, you must see what I am doing to be nothing good, to be nothing that can contribute to them, my welfare. But because I have the revelation about what I am pursuing, I know and I believe and I have the faith that either you believe or you don't believe uh, because I know where I am going uh, and I know what I am doing uh, and I understand what I'm doing uh, irrespective of you accepting or you not accepting uh, because of my perception, uh, I will be able to accomplish what I started to do. So with that one perception about something or a goal to pursue, you can never achieve the result that you are in need of. This brought or brings the idea that many people will begin with this, the same agenda with the same business idea with the same aspect of life but at the end of the day it might be one or two or few that will succeed or that will end in glory to pursue that vision why? because though we all started the same thing we all started to pursue that same thing but your perception behind what you are doing differs from my perception Some will come with the idea that, yeah, it's true. Others are silent, so I must also say. Others are doing their business, so I must also do it. Others are going to church, so I must also go to church. But I want you to understand that your perception to begin or to pursue a dream or a vision in life determines the result of where you are going. So the difference between the one that called him or herself a failure and the one that calls him or herself a, a victorious is that the victorious 
had a perception that this is what I am pursuing. Irrespective of what men will say about my vision that I am pursuing, I am not going to give up. I will pursue. I will change the dream until I land in a perfect conclusion. That's why the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 and the Bible says, and the Apostle Paul said that there is one thing that I know that I am chasing. I am fighting my fighter, but there is one thing that I must do. It is about due time that I must forget about the past. Forget about the past. Forget about the point of view of people about my life, but only to concentrate on the vision ahead and until I arrive after achieving that purpose. That is when I will stand and say indeed, I have fought a good fighter. Beloved, I came to present to you this morning that from today, you must begin to forget about what that has happened in the past days and concentrate from today and the future. The only difference between you failing and you succeeding is that uh, your perception is that uh, I will fight uh, no matter the difficulties that I will face in life uh, no matter the challenges uh, no matter the afflictions that I will go through uh, no matter uh, the opinion of people about my life uh, I will never give up I will never stop uh, I will never give up uh, I will never get tired uh, until I arrive uh, to after achieving that purpose uh, therefore I came to declare upon somebody's life uh, and then one that is seated under the sound of my voice this morning, uh, may I declare and submit to you uh, that from today, uh, the perception about your life, uh, the perception about doing that business, uh, from today, that perception uh, will determine your glorious end. Uh, therefore, I declare, uh, if I be a man of God, yes, indeed, I know I am a man of God. Therefore, I declare from today uh, that whatever you pursue, uh, because of that perception that you have, uh, I pray that let that vision uh, be accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, if that you believe or not, I came to declare upon your life uh, that from today, uh, every life go and vision that you pursue, uh, let the it end uh, in a success. Uh, somebody rise up and shout, uh, I receive this declaration. Uh, the Bible says in the book uh, of the, the book of Acts, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter number 14, verse 22. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, and the desire post the book of Matthew, chapter number 14, yeah, verse 26, the 22 downwards. Uh, the Bible says, uh, and then the desire post, uh, after they left Jesus Christ, uh, they were in the boat on the sea. And the Bible says, all of a sudden, uh, at that very dawn, Jesus Jesus Christ, after seeing the people through, he descended onto the sea. The Bible says, as soon as the disciples saw Jesus Christ from afar, some of them started, ah, that is an evil spirit on the sea. That is a ghost on the sea. The Bible said their perception was that that person walking on the sea was a ghost. The Bible said, and Peter came out of the multitude ah, and said, indeed, it is true. You are seeing a ghost, but I refuse to see a ghost. It is true. You are seeing an evil spirit on the sea. But I refuse to see an evil spirit. Uh, it is true you are seeing a ghost. Uh, but I see Jesus Christ. Uh, I see Jesus Christ. Uh, I see Jesus Christ. Uh, from today, I came to declare upon your life uh, that irrespective of what people are saying about the economy, uh, irrespective of what people are saying about the vision, uh, about the hardship in the system, uh, if your perception about that same thing will change and differ from this, uh, then you have a perfect end to learn. They were all saying that that is a ghost on the sea. I'm around the verse 25. That is a ghost. And I said, that is an evil spirit. But I said, yes, indeed. It is true. Because for Jesus Christ, we left him on, top, on the top of the mountain. He said even unto us that he go and see the multitude true. And we took the lead. So, according to human knowledge and understanding, there shouldn't be any means or ways that Jesus Christ will take the lead or ahead of us on the sea. So your mentality, your idea, your ideology, your theology about what you are saying that, that is a ghost, is true. But that is what you are seeing. That is your perception, that Jesus Christ cannot overtake us on the sea. You see, so you are seeing a, a ghost, but I refuse to see a ghost. But I want to see Jesus Christ. Today, I ask that what others are complaining, what do you complain about? What others are saying? 
there is nothing good in Christ. What do you say about Christ? That's why the book of Psalm 3 it says, Many are my adversaries. Many are those who say unto me that I have no salvation in Christ. Yes, indeed. That is the perception about my life. That is the perception about, about our Christ. But my perception about Christ is, is indeed, yeah. I know I have Jesus Christ. And therefore, I have salvation in Jesus Christ. From today, I came to declare upon the life of someone that is under the sound of my ministration. That from today, anyone that speaks evil about you, it is that perception that you cannot end well. It is that perception that you cannot get married. It is that perception that you cannot preach the gospel. It is that perception that you cannot profess. It is that perception that you cannot win so for the kingdom. But from today, I came to change that ideology. I came to change that mentality of your life. But I declare that from today, no matter what they say about your life, you are going to end well. Shout I will end well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am not enjoying your presence. Shout I will end well. Shout I will end well. Shout no matter what. Can you say after me? Shout no matter what. No matter what people say about my life, no matter what people speak about my life, I have the perception that I will end well. I will end well. Therefore, my soul, hear me. From today, you will end well in that business. You will end well in the marriage. You will end well in the financial aspect. You will end well. In the marketing, you will end well. In your church, you will end well. About the gospel, you will end well. Rise up and shout, I will end well. Please take your seat. You will end well. And that's where sin goes. That said, that is your perception, Ella. But I'm perception is not a ghost. He's Jesus Christ. At this war, yesterday Jesus Christ was not speaking. He was silenced on the sea. And Peter still had a perception, no matter what. Jesus, either you respond or not, yes, still, I see, I say, you are the one that I can see. Wow. He said, Jesus Christ. If you are the one, then command me to come. The Bible says, Peter, after Jesus Christ commanded him to come, he began to walk on the sea. He was going. Yeah, he was going. He got to the point and, re re and recalled that. I have been on this sea fishing for so many years. And I have not seen a man walking on this sea. I always see fishes, other birds and stuff, boats, but not a man. Who am I to walk on the sea? Wow. Then he also remembered that I've been a fisherman. I know on the sea there is a wave. I've been a fisherman. I know on the sea there is a storm. And when this element comes together, it can strike you no matter who you are, and you will sink. Wow. All of a sudden, his concentration about that person that others are saying is a ghost, that he claims to be Jesus Christ, that perception began to sink. May I submit to you that before you sink in life, your perception, your mentality, your mind has already sinked or sunk. <laughs> you are not catching the revelation. Before you fail in life, your mentality, your, your, your mindset has already failed. Because you begin to ask yourself, hey, so this, this thing that I'm doing, where I, the place, my house, my home, there isn't anyone to intervene when I run at lost. So let me stop. It was a clear opportunity. It was a, a privilege that you had to pursue and to chase that, that, that dream and to achieve it. But because your mentality, your mindset, you got to think about something evil. On the spot, your faith began to descend from being in the spirit. 
So immediately from that place, you begin to fail. The Bible says, all of a sudden, Peter began to sink. Why was he sinking? He was sinking because the perception that he, de he developed about Christ from the beginning, it got to a point in time, that perception was out of the mind. This is the reason as which most of us will start something good, but we may not be able to end well. Some of us will start something very big, but because we have different perceptions about others' business, in the course, we lose everything. What is your perception about Christ Jesus this morning? Your perception determines either you are going to end well or you are going to fail. Also, may I submit to you? The Bible says the other day, I read the book of Genesis chapter 37. And the Bible says, and then the, Joseph was with the brethren. The Bible says they got upon in time and they, they sold Joseph. Why? Because Joseph had a dream, had a vision, and he was able to make it clear to his brethren, thinking that these are my people. So even if I'm able to tell them, they will help me to pursue and to achieve it. Bible says it, it didn't please them. So they had the mentality that no, if you are to give this younger one a chance, he is going to overshadow us. Therefore, let us try and sell him out. And the Bible says, yes, indeed, they sold Joseph out. They pushed him to the pit. But the Bible says, uh, they touch it. Yeah, 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 you're not getting it. They touch it about Joseph's life uh, and for him to end well. But the means, the way at which he was to pursue that vision to end well, the brethren tried to change the way. But the Bible said, though they sold him out, though he suffered, though he was in prison, but the Bible says, at the end of it all, Joseph ended up being the prime minister of the nation. Meaning that the devil can change your way of achieving the purpose. But may I submit to you, the target, they cannot change it. You are not getting the revelation. They can change the means at which you must arrive. But the ways are changed. But your end is not changed. Your destiny is not changed. The target it's not changed. They sold him out, thinking that when we sell him, he's going to die. He's going to, not going to proceed to achieve the vision. But the Bible says, all of a sudden, before they realize, one of the days, there was hunger in the life of Israel. The Bible said they went out to fetch us some food. Before they go to the palace of Egypt, there was a man seated over there. All of a sudden, Joseph began to ask them, about their father, began to ask them about their mother, began to ask them much about the cultures of Israel. And they said to one another, this man, he might know us because he had been able to be mentioned some of our relatives, our father's name. Therefore, he might know us. And he replied unto them and said, your junior brother Joseph that you sold to the people, I am the one over here. May I submit to somebody, no be in hurry to sell or to kill your destiny help the person that was with you today, that you saw no good in him today, tomorrow might be your destiny helper. May I submit to you that from today, no matter how they handed you, you are going to end well. Yeah, 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 you are not getting it. You are going to end well. You are going to end well. They tried to change the way of Joseph, but the target was not missed. They try to change the way. Something that would have been simple and easy for Joseph to pursue and to achieve. They change the process. But the good news is that the process, the procedure, in order to achieve the goal was changed by the target. What is the target? The target is that he will become the king over his people. And at the end of the day, Joseph became the king, the elder, the most glorious among the fellow brethren. May I submit to you that no matter their perception about your life, no matter how they see you, either they give you the chance or not, have the perception that I will end well and you will never fail that agenda.
Sometimes we have the perception that until we have the platform in the church, that's when we are called pastors, we are called prophets. If you don't have a church, or you are not heading a church that is, you are not a pastor, you are not a man of God, or you are not an evangelist, right? Let's admit to you. That is other people's perception. You were not called whilst you were in church. You were called whilst you were at home. Therefore, from that place that you were ordained, be a minister of God. The difference between the one that is prophesying and you is that your perception about prophecy is wrong. Your perception about the kingdom of God is wrong. So therefore, at least have a clear conscience about it, but you are refusing to get it. So you always ask, how do I become like this man of God? Yes, indeed, they are procedures, but start from where you are. On that same street, start from there. The exact people that you have to be with them, just be with them. Start from there. Start from there. Start from there. Start from there. Yeah. So the Bible says, and then when Peter had this clear concept about Christ, the Bible says, though at a point in time he began to give up, but he remembered that. All of a sudden, Peter remembered that the other day that they were coming from the top of the mountain, they passed through the city, they got to the point in time, and Jesus Christ asked the disciples and said, What were the people saying about me? Whom do they even say that the Son of Man is? The Bible says, The place was very silent. Peter had the clear idea and perception about Christ and said, The others were saying, Some said, You are like the prophet Jeremiah. Some said, You are like some of the Odin prophets. Some said, You are like that of John the Baptist. And he said, but whom hmm, you are right with me. So whom do you see me to be? Wow. That is the situation that Jesus Christ had wanted to know the clear concept or the clear the perception of the disciples about him that he had been working with him. Most of them were, were working with Jesus Christ, but they had the perception that other people were saying about Christ, but not their, their own perception about him. Others said, others said. So when he asked, they were others said, some said. Some said, some said, but so you that you have been following me, what do you say or whom do you say? Aya. It took Peter and came out and said, You are the son of man. You are the one that prophecies came from the ancient days and said, You are going to come and then deliver the world from their sins. Uh, the Bible said, All of a sudden, Jesus Christ looked at Peter and said, Yeah, that are the rock upon which my church shall be built. Uh, and the Bible says, When Peter was sinking, he remembered that Jesus Christ once told him that, Peter, upon you, my church will be built. So if I sink, then where is going to be the church of Christ? Therefore, no matter what, no matter what, no matter the storm, no matter the wave, I will still walk upon this sea. The Bible said he remembered that, that there is an assignment for him to fulfill. So if he sinks today, that means the church of God will have no foundation after Christ. The Bible said he held on to his faith and he then looked up again onto Christ. And all of a sudden, he was seeking though, but he came up again. I came to speak to somebody and 
may I submit to you that from today, if you are going to consider the assignment that God wants you to pursue on this earth, if you are going to consider the assignment, the work that God has given to you for you to fulfill, no matter what you go through, either they slap you, you still focus. Either they laugh at you, you still focus. Either you fall, you will rise again. Either you are poor, you will focus. Either you are rich, you will focus. Either you are married, you will focus. Either you are unmarried, you will focus. Either you are divorced, you will focus. Either you are still in the marriage, you will focus. Why? Because there is a particular assignment that God gave to you that as you are coming on this earth, that particular assignment must be fulfilled through you. So when you remember this each and every day that you wake up, you will never give up. Irrespective of the afflictions, you will never give up. Irrespective of the dangers you go through, you will never give up. Why? Because that assignment has just yet been fulfilled. Peter, remember because no then do i am sinking but I must look up again. I don't know what is causing you to sink in life. That business, I don't know what caused you to sink. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the marriage, I don't know what is causing you to sink. In the finances, I don't know what is causing you to sink. In your health life, I don't know what is causing you to sink. But may I submit to you that if from today, you are going to look up again onto Jesus, if you are going to rise again and concentrate on Jesus, no matter where you've sunk up to, you will rise again. You are not responding. You will rise again. You will rise again. Why? Because there is an assignment that you ought to fulfill. That's what he said that uh, the spirit that was able to raise Jesus Christ from the death, uh, if that same spirit is in you, uh, your matter bodies that are dead, uh, they will come back to life. Uh, may I submit to somebody, uh, if only you will connect to the to Christ uh, and will connect to the kingdom of God, then whatever that is dying in your life uh, is getting life back again. Uh, coming back to life, uh, your business, uh, coming back to life, uh, the gift that God gave to you, uh, coming back to activeness, uh, anything that you are pursuing, uh, it is coming back to life. Come back to life. Look at me, man. Somebody. Can you, can you, have you ever sat, sat down to think about, oh God, did you, did you create me to just come to this earth? As an infant, to grow, to walk, to sit, grow, back to the school or business, eat, sleep, die and go. Oh, what is my assignment to fulfill on the, in the world? Look at this. Each and every individual has an assignment to fulfill. If you've not yet recognized or gotten to know the particular assignment that God gave to you, then you must begin to pray about it. The reason at which most of us are not succeeding in life is that there is an assignment that God gave to you, but you are trying to run away from that assignment. So no matter what you do, it will not work. It will not work. It will not work. On Tabitha remembered his assignment. He then focused on Christ and he came back from sinking. Wow. And I then asked myself, so Jesus Christ knew perfectly that he can save Peter from sinking, but why did he allow him to sink first? Christ. So you have the capacity to make sure that Peter is out of sinking. And you made him, you saw him through to be sinking. Wow. Wow. Then this Christ is wicked. Wow. That is other perception. You see, and I link this to the other day, the Bible says, and Jesus Christ was in the boat with the disciples. And the Bible says, all of a sudden, the boat was sinking. 
and then water was all over the boat, and Jesus Christ was asleep. No, look at this. It's my perception. Christ was not asleep, but look at this. There's something we call loyalty. Can you repeat? Loyalty. Can you repeat? Loyalty. Brofunu cabinet in Kum. Cause a loyalty. Ele for Kaye cabin now. Oh, international school. I had in Sira. Jesus Christ knew. Look at this. Let's look at, come to the normal aspect of man. When you train your child, those of us that are apprentices in our various work, when you train them to the standard that you know that if I'm not there, they will be able to handle the work well. Make every sense and do everything good. You can entrust it under their care and you leave to pursue any other assignment elsewhere because you believe that ah, for this person, he can do it. So, Jesus Christ knew that he has been with these disciples for so many years. So, he knew that the impartation that came according to the book of Acts, chapter number 1, verse 8. I commanded him, stay here until the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, come to fulfill thee. And they were there. The Spirit came. Look at this. The perception of him is that he knew that I have trained these people for so many years. Peter has been with me. The other disciples are, was with them. So at least by now, they might have gotten at least some of the aspect or at least about 90% of what I can do. So at this point in time, they have the capacity, the ability to command the storm, to command the wind, to command the waves to be silent. You know, one other aspect that sometimes we think Jesus Christ is rather disappointed us, but it is wrong. Sometimes we rather disappoint Jesus Christ. Because look at when you began to believe in Christ, and after this far, you would have to call a prophet to come and pray for you when you are at home suffering from a, a disease or a sickness, or when there are country challenges. So without them coming, I'm not saying calling a prophet to pray for you is wrong. It's good. But sometimes, it's not every aspect that you have to because you must be on your own. Why? Because you've come to church, you've believed for so many years ago. So Peter asked him the other day, that since you believe, what have you gotten? Since you believe, what have you gotten? What, so so have, you, have you encountered the Holy Spirit? So Jesus Christ knew that. At this far, I've been with these disciples, they might, must at least be able to speak to just a wind. And they had a perception. Oh, Say yes, you are hiding. Yes, you are hiding. No multi, no omu. Yes, you are hiding. No multi, no omu. Yes, you are hiding. But don't forget that that yes, you are talking about. When the boat sinks, this is the man that is a supernatural man. Even the boat can sink, but yesterday the man can come out of the sea and you will still be sinking under the sea. I don't know if I catch the revelation. Yes, now he was with you in the sea. Ah, my junior said, What that? He must wake up. To rescue you from sinking. Don't forget that Christ is the one you are following. He has the ability, even upon the water, he was able to walk. How much more in the sea he cannot come out? So even when the, you sink, he can still come out. But it is about your personal life to encounter Christ and Jesus so that when the power of God comes upon you, irrespective of the pastor attending to you or not, irrespective of the prophet prophesying to you or not, irrespective of the evangelist evangelizing to you or not, you will be able to say it is well. Even though you are down, you will be able to say it is well. Even though you are weak, you will be able to say I am stronger. Even though you are down, you will be able to rise and bounce back to your feet. Somebody may ask me to you that from today you've received more than enough to remain a child of God. You've received more than enough to always come to church and sit down quietly. You are more than enough to go outside there as if you have no power in you. May I submit to you that from today if you can open your mouth and prophesy it shall come to establish. If you can open your mouth and pray signs and wonders are going to work out of your hand. If you can evangelize outside there, there is going to be signs and wonders. Somebody rise up to your feet and shout from today. Shout from today. I have received the power from God. 
I have received uh, the capacity uh, from God. Therefore, from today, ye down mountains, uh, ye down mountains, uh, hear the word of God. Hear the word of God. I command thee uh, that go out of my life, uh, ye that sickness. Uh, I command thee uh, that leave my flesh, uh, ye that challenges. Uh, I command thee, uh, I triumph. Uh, yeah, 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 you are not connecting. Uh, I triumph uh, over sickness. Uh, I triumph uh, over death. Uh, I triumph uh, over accident. Uh, I triumph uh, over divorce. Uh, I triumph uh, over afflictions. Uh, I triumph uh, over pains. Uh, I triumph uh, over the trap uh, of the devil. Uh, somebody I profess uh, that from today, uh, every trap before you, uh, you've triumphed. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Every danger before you, uh, you've triumphed. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Every challenge in your life, uh, you've triumphed. Uh, every challenge in your marriage, uh, you've triumphed. Uh, scream on the top of your voice and say, I triumph. Take your seat. I triumph. It's about time. We've been in church for so many years. It's about time. Some of us, somebody won out for Christ. You must also go out there and win a soul. You've been too mature in the church and not bringing at even a single soul to the church. You've been too mature in the church than not pursuing any activity in the church to support the growth of the church. You'll be too mature in the church than not contributing to the growth of the kingdom of God. So Jesus Christ had that perception of loyalty that I am the one that trained them. That is the Ghanaian concept of education. Jean, we have Abba, we have building and construction lectures that are teaching at the technical universities. And they will go in for a mason to build their houses. They will give their, their, their house plan to others to draw it for them. So what are you teaching the people? We have lecturers that are teaching mechanics at the various institutions. When that same lecturer had, has a fault in his or her car, he will take it to the, the fitter, the, the one we call fitter, the magazine, fit it for me. So if you cannot fit that fault, then what are you teaching the people? That's brought the idea that Jesus Christ had so much confidence in the disciples that I was the one that trained them and I am the one that is training them. So up to this far, I believe when I command, it is established. So they followed me for a longer period ago. So up to this time, when they command, it must what? Be commanded. When they say it should die, it must what? Die. When they say it should live, it must what? Live. So he was expecting them to write and then speak to the storm for it to be calm. But they didn't. Why? Because they remained children. They remained kids following Jesus Christ. They were always expecting that Christ will always be feeding them. May I submit to you, if you can rise from today and see yourself that you've been too mature in the body of Christ than reacting as if you are a kid and you can rise up in the midnight, rise up in the day to command into the atmosphere something is going to happen then may I submit to you that grace has come to you once me and young to me first on in the, the book of Acts chapter number 8 verse 5 downwards and the Bible says the other day brother Philip the one that people knew this is just a Philip, he was out of the Samaria, not any other day, but that was the time uh, that they saw that used to pursue the disciples or the apostles. Uh, the Bible says there was a great pursuit that he pursued them uh, and he killed most of them. Uh, from that same time, the Bible says, and Philip went out to the street of Samaria and the Bible says all of a sudden, uh, he began to preach the gospel about Jesus Christ uh, and unto those or the many that believed, uh, the Bible said there were so many uh, signs and wonders and diseases were cured 
or healed in their life. Uh, may I submit to you that from today, uh, wherever you open your mouth, uh, let there be signs and wonders. Uh, wherever you stretch forth your hand, uh, let there be signs and wonders. Whenever you open your mouth, uh, let there be a glory to God. What this means that he didn't say an apostle Philip or prophet Philip or evangelist Philip. He said Philip. That means he had no title. Wow. So if just an ordinary Philip can preach for the Spirit of God to take over, for signs and wonders to be worked, wow, you are more than that Philip. Because nothing at all. Say, you're in front of D for Grana, and you're in front of Sister Mercy, you're in front of Brad Richard, and you're in there's a title that has been added to you, to your name. But over there he said, then Philip, he didn't say Prophet Philip, but that Philip, Apostle Philip, if an ordinary Philip was able to preach for signs and wonders to be worked out of his ways, then you are more than that Brother Philip. From today, may you have that power, have that ability, have the capacity, have the spirit to open your mouth as you utter a word. Let your word carry power. God is raising intercessors for the church. God is raising intercessors for their families. God is raising intercessors for the nation. But who is ready? Who is ready? Who is ready? If you are ready, that may I profess by the power and the anointing of the father of the house, professor I declare to you uh, that from today uh, you'll be raised uh, from one level to another level uh, in the kingdom of God. If you used to be a child, uh, today you are a son, uh, today you are a daughter. Uh, if you used to be that in the Christ kingdom, uh, from today you are activified because you are here to remember that you have an assignment to pursue. As I wrap up, I'm taking the book of First Samuel chapter number nine, verse one. That was First Samuel chapter number nine, First Samuel chapter nine, verse one. That was. And the Bible says, and then there was a time that Kesh, the father of Saul, he lost a donkey and called upon Saul. Saul, go out there, go to the bush, go through the street, and find out if. You can find that donkey. Papa, this is my question. Is it that it was only so? Is it that it was only so that was at the place by that time? Or he chose to call so? Is it that there was, there, there was no one else to go and look after that donkey? are coming to the person. How can the person survive it? At least you can ask someone to him. Oh, only way mungo kwe, but also onu kwa ngo. Meaning that ogu kura na onfang. Moreover, Bible says, and when Saul was going, he remembered that let me call one of the servants and go with him. So he called a servant to go with him. Look at this. May I submit to you? When you have the privilege to help someone, don't hesitate to do it. Saul so, didn't like to go alone. He, he, he liked to go with one of the servants. Wow. And the Bible says, when they were going, they searched through the street, the bushes, whatever it is. They didn't get to find the animal. The servant that Saul so, took with him said, Master, I know of a prophet that I believe I have a faith that when we are to acquire the knowledge of God from him, he will be able to show us where the anima is. Sometimes your destiny helper appears like someone that has no even good destiny. Sometimes your destiny helper will appear as if someone that is an even, excuse my language, an infant or, or, or let's say an orphan. Sometimes your destiny helper may appear as if someone that you might not even love the person. Because the situation that person found himself in, you, you might you, you will be too you you will find yourself in a, a hairy situation to suck the person away. So when to find this animal, but it took the wisdom, the faith, the perception of, of 
the servant and said, Master, I know of this prophet. Let's go to him. I know when we go there. Look at the statement that he made. He, the, the servant didn't say, he will show us where the animal is. But he said, let's go and inquire the knowledge of God from him. Wow. Meaning that, to inquire the knowledge of God from him. Meaning that, what is that knowledge? It might be the knowledge of God about King Saul. It might be the knowledge of God about the assignment to go out in the name of looking, going after a donkey. Because they were not, he didn't say, let's go and then find out the word about of the donkey from him. But let's go and acquire the knowledge, the mind of God from him. Meaning that, let's go there and acquire the mind of God. Maybe he will be able to tell us even more than what we are chasing. The Bible says, and when they go to the prophet, all of a sudden the prophet said unto them, that ah, man, he can saw, what are you looking for? The question is, Saul left the home as a saw. He got to the prophet. The prophet said, King Saul. The Bible says, and he said unto them that the animal at which you are looking for has returned home. The question here is that after the animal returned home, why didn't the parent of Saul send another group of people that go and look after Saul? For the animal has come. But the only interest is that they are interested in in the animal alone, but not so. That means at that very point in time, the donkey was of more value than so. So when they had the donkey back home, they didn't have anything to do with so. Either he will die, they don't care. Either he will survive, they don't care. Either he will return, they don't care. But may I submit to you, the number of people that knew that you left home with hunger, so you will die out of hunger. The number of the people that they knew, you are so on the street. Uh, they don't expect you back home. Uh, may I submit to you, uh, God is a changer of the game. Uh, you left home empty, uh, but before you return, uh, you are going to go with a full of bag. Uh, you left home uh, without any hope in you. Uh, but before you return home, uh, there's going to be hope. Uh, may I submit to you uh, that the concept of God about you uh, differs from the concept of men about you. Uh, why? Because men are men of God. But our God is a God for man. What do I mean? Men of God. But God is a God for man. Why? Because God is a God that he is the God in the position to redefine the destiny of a man. May I submit to you that from today, let the power of God intervene to redefine your destiny. If you are in pain, sir, let God intervene to redefine your destiny. If you are in weeping, let God intervene to to redefine your destiny. As I conclude, Saul left home as they saw. The animal is back. Because we have But you know. What is the perception of men about your life? Remember, it is the idea of men that you cannot survive. It's hardship. But God is the goal for you. From today, let God redefine your destiny. Let God redefine your life. Let God redefine your destiny. Your marriage, if it is in pain, let God come to redefine it. If your business is in pain, let God come and then redefine it. Shout, oh God, redefine my destiny. Oh God, redefine my business. Oh God, redefine my relationship. Oh God, redefine my spiritual life. Though I have felt for so many times, though I am weak in the flesh, but from today, I refuse to be remain a child. I refuse to be on the floor. I have gotten the power of a riser. I will walk into my power of God. I will walk into the life of God. I will walk into the life of God. And I will walk into the power of God. The Bible said, Saul left the home at death's soul. 
hey, so, he just got to him, so, hey, so, hey, so. But when after he accounted the prophet through the servant, there was a form of anointing. Let that anointing locate you today. Yeah, 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 yeah. An anointing of relevance. One tears here. An anointing of promotion. An anointing that is capable of refining your life. Uh, let it locate you. The Bible says, and Saul returned home. And as soon as he meets the fellow brethren, they began King Saul. Hey, Saul. So, you know what I tell you? I see me going with them. And so, I see so going with them. And so, and I'm going to be a little bit. I'm So I pray and intercede on the behalf of someone that from today, no matter the perception of the people about your life, before you return to the family, or be free, I'll be free, I'll check, or no, he might check, or be as you know, if we say, I see my city school one copy, or near John Pabia, if you were in the house of Impo or Jose, you buy any of your free fiat, you go here, if you say, you're calling Champoy in Yahoo and Finning Samo, but may I submit to you that you've encountered God from today, a year about this time, before you return to your family house, they will come and bow before you. Why? Because there is a supernatural anointing that has come upon your life. I prophesy and declare upon the life of someone that from today, receive that anointing, receive that grace, shout, I receive that grace. was calling him King Saul. All the people all over were calling him Saul. What has happened? Just because he has encountered a specific and a special anointing. Let that anointing locate your life. Let that anointing locate your business. Let that anointing locate your marriage. Let that anointing come at your way. Shall we rise up to our feet? So he is able to deliver. He is able to deliver. Mame. Araboseliante. Mame. Arabozika. Labasuka. Araboza. Araboza. Say he's able to deliver. God deliver you. He is able to bless. He is able to deliver. He is able. Say he is able to bless. He is able to bless. Amen, Isaiah. He is able to bless. Amen. Karabozi kanta ya boze, leka karabozi kanta boze. I don't know the situation or the condition that you find yourself. The last time I was with that on the committee 11, as soon as I was about taking over the microphone and I had a message, I didn't even know the one. And the message, I give it to you, I show it to you and you read it. The person said, bro, I feel like giving up in life. Because whenever I wake up, I see that my soul is out of my flesh. And I see I'm walking through today. It's like, I've given up in everything. I feel like giving up in my own life. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what makes you as if there isn't any hope or salvation in Christ for you. You see, it is the perception of, of the devil that sometimes try to make sure that they change our mentality or understanding about Christ. Therefore, then we begin to be indeed as if we are offered. But I came to reassure you that my name is Isaiah. He is able to
to bless. He's able to deliver. He is able. Connect with the faith. To bless. He is able. in your mind that with that particular thing, your God is not capable of doing. What makes you feel, sometimes feel like, hey, why don't I give up? What is that aspect? What is content in your life that always try to frustrate you? Do you believe that our Lord is able to deliver you. Then we're going to speak to God. That, oh God. Begin to speak to God. That God. Whatever situation that I found myself in life that has been arisen at which the devil has been saying to me that I have no salvation in you, God. Let that error be corrected. Speak to God. Never in Gaza. Sometimes men will have a clear plan for you before you realize it has been thwarted. Why? Because there is a the devil that wants to intervene your blessings and they scatter everything. There are most of us that the situation we find ourselves in, sometimes we do see it that a dear Nikoye and Mwame, but yes, to be self self go and do it. There are most of us that we want our life to remain holy for the kingdom business or purpose. But there's a spirit that always speaks to us that go, go, go. Because there is a force behind it. Some of us that sometimes we don't want to be drunk, out, but before we realize we are already drunk. Why? Because there is that familiar spirit that always pushes us to that situation. There are most of us that we have the plans, we have the idea, the knowledge about what we are doing. We can calculate to, to stand out. We can know our profit, our loss, and everything. But no matter what we do, no matter the application we apply on our business or finances, we stay end up in loss. Concentrate. The Bible says the book of Acts the 16. And when Paul and Silas had the news that passed by Macedonia and then help us. The Bible says as soon as they were about entering the city there was this young lady that was possessed by the demons or that was demonized. 
and he uses to give prophecy about people out of his, her prophesying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of her prophesying, her others used to make wealth out of it. But the spirit behind the prophecy is not from God. At that moment, there was a fault behind what she was doing. Her, her life or herself was not getting anything from what she was doing. Why? Because at that time, that demonized spirit has made her a slave to the people. So she wished Sanaka would die. But unto me, because there is a force. I don't know what always commands you that your feet are early in that kind of prostitute. I don't know what always pushes you that you are in hurry to drink. I don't know that what pushes you that you always joke about the things of the kingdom. May I submit to you? We've been speaking about this kingdom that God and his kingdom is coming again. But may I submit to you? It is sooner than sooner. The kingdom of God is near. What is the situation? prevent us from giving ourselves fully or wholly to Christ. Sometimes it's not our fault. You have the conviction that I want to repent and give myself to Christ. Before you walk out to the place, as soon as you set an eye on that kind of drink or wine appetite and that kind of adonko, unless you taste it, mama, you cannot stand. What's prophesying? Not out of his ability or her ability. Yeah, I wanted to come out, but he didn't. But I came to declare, are you connecting? Uh, are you connecting? I came to declare about somebody's life uh, that from today, whatever spirit uh, that commands you uh, and big hardship upon your life, uh, may you be delivered. Uh, shout, I am delivered. Shout, I am delivered. Shout, oh God, deliver my soul. Deliver my body. Deliver my friend from satanic agenda. Shout, oh God, by the power of your spirit. Deliver me. Deliver me. Clap your hands. Pray that prayer to God. Deliver my soul. Deliver my body. Deliver my flesh. Deliver my contents. Whatever that pushes me to the evil word, oh God. I pray thee that God deliver deliver my soul, deliver my body, deliver my flesh in the name of close your eyes and lift up the twins as I end with you it's 4 o'clock in the evening we are here praying there will be some certain revelation about Papa and this night we are here to pray, and that is 6 o'clock we begin, then roughly by 8.30 we close do what to come and lift up your hands close your eyes I want you to cast your eyes on the cross of Calvary where Jesus Christ said I'm finished. I'm finished and it is finished. Why? Because your sins have been forgiven. Why? Because you have been made whole. Why? Because whatever that makes you think as if your life is about ending, that particular thing is out of your life. There are most of us over here that God has intentionally brought some people our way in our way to help us. But the devil has wanted to draw them or push them away from us. But I pray that let God intervene. Just lift up your in the next just about two minutes. I end with you. Speak to God, God. God. You know the aspect that you are suffering. You know it more than me. So you, don't, you must not wait for me to come and prophesy to you. But you know, that God, I'm telling you, today, I have a clear concept about you. I have my conception about you, that God, you have the capacity, the ability to turn my life upside down. Before tomorrow comes, let it be. Speak to God. Let's speak to God. Let's speak to God. Enti kanya yedi Shena kwa isu Na maye Yena fom kwa eradie Adu musu Na ufi soro Ma 
I don't know the aspect that you need the words of salvation to be open unto you. I don't know either your marriage or business. I don't know the aspect of the business negotiation that you're negotiating that you want it to favor you. And he cried and said, Oh God, you are the well of salvation. We are the most woe. One of his sorrow. We are the most woe. And if he is so. If you have any seat, don't look at me, but look up to the altar of God and connect your spirit to it. God, as I pick this seat, I connect to whatever single word of you that dropped. It is not compulsory, it's not by force. If you are a means, you can connect. If you don't have, Yes, to connect with us. God, I speak as I connect my faith to the altar of the house. That God, I know my situation is worse, but you are the only one that has capacity, the ability to change it. God, I you. If you are done, walk to the altar and drop it. When I will feel sorrow, and to me, no beer, me, no beer, me, no beer. Are you singing with faith or you are singing with just something like and to me, no May God redefine your hope. God is reassuring someone of a hope. Can somebody connect his own There is an atmosphere of the Spirit of God. Say, Oh, one better. Say, to me, say, to me, and see, Oh, one better. Say, to me, say, Oh, one better. Say, to me, say, Oh, one better. And if I won't sound training on the Jimmy Free, my time for saying, Mama, oh, she's saying, you know, and you know, yeah, I don't know what you are going through. 
and I don't know what the plans of the devil about your life. Your own people that you are with, I don't know the negative mentality I have of you. And I see a mighty hand of God that is lifting some people from that kind of muddy situation and keeping them uh, on a very bright place. And as I was speaking to you, uh, I see the power of God that has descended mightily upon some people. And by the count of seven, uh, God is really finding the destiny of people. One who is connected, uh, receive that power. If you are connected, uh, receive that touch. If you are connected, uh, receive that grace. And the wonder that will connect your soul, your spirit, and God. Mammy, I saw both Antima. What are you doing? Mammy, I saw both Antima. Your perception about Christ. Your faith in Christ. Father, we thank you for the day. We believe so much in you that you have the capacity, the ability to save us. God, we are here with thy congregation. We pray that God, there are many afflictions that Satan has wanted to afflict your people with. The perception about you, God, today is saying that we only have the faith and belief that God, you are the only one that has the power, the ability to save us from no matter what we are facing in life. Therefore, God, we've come before you. Jeremiah 27 verse number 18 it said and if they be prophets and if indeed they are with the word of the Lord let them make intercession on the behalf of the people and say unto God that oh God spare thy people and their fine vessels but the vessel of the world I connect to the anointing of my father prophet Samuel Atanga and I make intercession over the life of everyone in this auditorium that your life is spared your finances is spared your marriage is spared and I want the devil to stay away from your life as the year goes to an end I declare you will not miss your count your husband will not miss his count your wife will not miss her count your children will not miss their count your family will not miss their count I declare you will end well you triumph over death, you've triumphed over sickness, you've triumphed over divorce, you've triumphed over any satanic agenda in your life.